<clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kalimera. Good morning. In today's Gospel reading, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, we hear of a humbled person at their most raw and emotional time of their life, where the father of the child who was possessed cried out to our Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. I believe, help my unbelief. Today's Gospel reading that has been appropriately placed in this Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Great Lent, is kind of giving us that reminder again about the importance of faith, and without faith, works are meaningless. Because when we have faith and trust in God, He even tells us not only in Scripture, but in every way of our lives, anything is possible. And we witness that especially today because the disciples at this point in the Gospel reading, we hear something in the attitude where they have been with our Lord for some time now, they feel that they've learned a lot, so they think that they too can start healing and saving people. So when this man with the child who was possessed and ill went to his disciples and asked them to heal him, they could not. They said the same prayers that Jesus said, but it didn't happen. And that was because of an attitude of arrogance and pride. Because they have found the Messiah, they had found the Savior, but what did our Lord tell them later on and privately? That this could have only been healed with prayer and fasting. Two strong attributes of a human that are also derivatives of humility and selflessness. Because prayer is understanding that you are putting your trust in something or someone else. Because if not, what is the reality or the necessity of prayer? Why do you do it? Why do you need it? As I always bring up the joke, but it's true, are we expecting that God is some type of genie and just going to give you that great blessing because you prayed? I don't think so. Because even in the beginning of this miracle today, the father who went up to our Lord was beseeching him to heal his son who has been ill, as he said, from his youth. But then our Lord knows and understands each and every one of our hearts and our souls and minds. Because then he says afterwards, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Because he said, if you believe, this will happen. And that's something powerful for us to really contemplate and understand. Because I have many faithful who come up to me and in essence of with tears and sadness, they feel that struggle when something has either befallen them or a loved one. And then we always get into the attitude of the why, the how, and what did they do to deserve this. Usually it's with the afflictions of illnesses, of cancer, or sadly an untimely death that none of us prepared for. Where then we say, why? And where was God? And why isn't he helping me in that manner? Can we not turn the picture a little bit larger or turn the page, so to say, to look at a different side of the coin, to see that maybe God has always been present? Where have I been in my life and relationship with God? Or where was that person in the relationship with God? Where I know, I know it sounds very odd, but in many instances, our Lord in his divine compassion and mercy does things for us when we might not realize that we need them. Or when we ask for something from God, he might not give it to us because he knows that that might not be the right thing for us throughout our lives. Think about that. But in everything I just brought up, the Father, our own spiritual lives, and the apostles and everything that goes on, even our Lord in his divine humility and selflessness, all went through a type of struggle. That struggle in life is the key to salvation. I will repeat that again. Struggle in life is the key to salvation. Do we not hear our forefathers, our grandparents and relatives about how they struggled, how they went through difficulties in life? Do we not have modern day struggles? Yes, they're different than our grandparents and great grandparents and our forefathers, but they exist. And now they exist in a more, I think, in a weird and harsh way, because if our forefathers literally suffered through war, and the Greek term phtochia and pina, in other words, of poor and not having food, we now have the struggle of gluttony, of pride and of ego to have whatever you want. Let me ask every single one of you, who amongst us is satisfied? No one. No one is truly satisfied. We're always desiring for more, yet that exists. So then I work harder and I work more tediously. I put less effort into my family. I put less effort in my life. I put less focus on my spiritual life. 
And then reality sets in where then I realize time has passed. I look back at what I've done in my life and then I realize, so what was the purpose? Because when we can contemplate that struggle in life, it's something very heavy but relatable. Something that is necessary for us to put that burden on someone. And who is that? In our faith and trust in God. That is why today, simultaneously, the church and its divine love and wisdom appropriates for the commemoration of St. John of Climacus. St. John, the writer of the ladder of divine ascent. This ladder is a beautiful metaphorical ladder that leads from earth to heaven, from humanity to salvation. They say there's roughly 30 steps for us to attain it. And you know what's the best one to get your first step on there before you can even climb the ladder? And it's acknowledgement. It's understanding. I'm a sinner. I'm doing everything incorrectly. It's time for me to change. And when you can do that, then you begin the process. And you climb those first steps. Every step is a virtue. But all the virtues derive from the love of God. And they remind us of those two strong ones that are the pillars of this metaphorical ladder. Humility and selflessness. Without humility, to understand that I all, we all struggle and that I am sympathetic to each other, I will never see and understand God's grace. And without an attitude of selflessness that my forefathers offered for me to have a wonderful life, I then in turn have now become gluttonous, full of pride, full of wealth, full of ego, and stuff that in turn separates me from God and separates me from my fellow man. That's why when we understand and look into the study of this renowned church father who put this book together that has now been translated to hundreds of various languages for people to understand, so much so a couple of weeks ago, which I thought was so unique, Mr. Alex Magdalenos, who spoke to us during our Lenten lecture, highlighted a woman who was a librarian, quite a high librarian, was in essence showing us how they gave a report and a synopsis about this really cool and spiritually edifying book, modern day, called The Ladder of Divine Ascent. In modern terms, it didn't say it had to do with a saint of the church. It had nothing to do with religion. It was just expressed to show that even in modern day, outside of religion, this book of the ladder of divine ascent can guide anyone into finding a new spirituality that in turn can bring them to a higher realm in life. But the greater question I have for yourselves and for myself is very simple. How can I humble myself so that I in turn can recognize God? Because when I can do that, now that we've gone through Lent, and my friends, Kiriakito and Bayou and Palm Sunday is two weeks away. Holy Week is almost here. As I said last week, did you fast? No? Start fasting. So, have you humbled yourself these last four weeks? No? Start now. Start today with your loved ones. Be humble. Be selfless. And then in turn, as we know as the tenets of our faith as being about prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, especially during Lent, why are we not living every single one of those? Because if you pray and you don't fast and give, it's meaningless. If you fast from food, yet you harm someone and you don't pray and don't give, meaningless. And then in turn, if you give to people and you're a great philanthropist, God bless you and everything else, but you don't pray and you don't fast, meaningless. Everything is relatable and everything is tangible for one thing that reminds us about today's gospel and about what St. John, who wrote the ladder of divine ascent, reminds us. That if we want to attain salvation, theosis, oneness with God, we must humble ourselves, we must become selfless, and as the psalmist King David writes in the beautiful psalms, may I become in front of our Lord and offer him a humble and contrite heart. Amen.